Well, it's a good morning, everybody. Welcome to Stock Radio Stocks on the Move for another week. My name is Richard Lee. I manage StockRadio.com.au website for you. Today's date is the 1st of February 2024. I'm a little bit rusty. I've had a bit of a holiday. I'm feeling refreshed and rejuvenated. And I'm very happy to see that the market has continued where we left it off in December, where there's lots of new highs inkling about there in the market. And we're now seeing a lot of them come to fruition. US indices are making new highs. Um, and a lot of stocks are making new highs. So we're going to cover all this today. Firstly, what I'm going to talk about, back to square one for us, stock radar targets trends. That's what we do. We target trends uh, triggered by two setups. One is the new high and the other one is the trend reversal. So I'm going to go through that a bit today. Just a bit of background for you, just to remind you a bit about what I do. Okay, as I said before, there are new highs uh, everywhere. I'm going to focus mainly on new highs today, but I'll later recap on our other two setups, on the two setups, new highs and trend reversals later on. US indices are making new highs, I mentioned, and our market pumped through a new high last uh, yesterday. Uh, it's come back again today. Um, so we're going to have an interesting week this week to see what happens. Okay, um, just took a little bit about trends. Trends inevitably... Um, well-developed trends in, in, in inevitably extend further than we expect. Um, that's why we have stops. So some of the stocks that I look at today, um, such as uh, Prometicus, Carsars, which we all looked at last year, um, Magellan Global Fund, uh, even JXS, James Hardy, you know, they're just extending their gains over and over and over. That's why it's so important that we don't get out when we feel like we've got a good profit. We make sure we maximise those gains and run those profits as best as we can. So it's twofold, cut the losses and maximise the gains is the whole thing. It's an old adage, but true. So firstly, what I want to go into is a little bit about what I do today. Uh, some of you may know, but some of you may not. So I'm just going to recap a little bit on it for you at the moment. Okay, firstly, on the Stock Radar homepage, you can go to the About section to find out exactly what it is we do and how we do it. So you can see the arrow there pointing to it, uh, tells you where to go. And at that page there, you will find out. Here you will find, okay, what is Stock Radar? What, does, what is it that we do? That's trading strategy. You'll find out all about all our services that we offer. Uh, an, an article about getting real in the stock market. I'm a realist, uh, I'm not a theoretician, a theoretician if that's a word. Um, I'm a realist about the stock market. I trade, I trade for money, I trade for living, so I've got to be real about what I do. I've got to have stops, I've got to run my profits, all this sort of stuff. So getting real about the stock market is an important article there. There's a guide to using stock rate, a bit about the ins and outs, entries and exits, um, you know, stops, um, just a few rules that I have uh, that can combine to what I do in stock rate, because everything I do is rule-based and controlled. Um, I have a big article on trend intensity indicator, which is a very important part of what I do, and it's unique to Stock Radar. The premium portfolio service, which I also offer, as opposed to the basic service, which are the two services. So I explain the, pre the premium portfolio service, what it is and how it works, and why I've done it. Then there are 10 simple tips uh, to trading success. Just a few simple things that you've got to do if you want to succeed, okay? Then there's a couple of articles on a little bit about perspective, the five-year plan, a bit like um, the power of patience in this market. Now, the last couple of years have been very tough years, but they occur and they are real and we have to deal with them. For the most part, the market goes up. And I already know that some people have got a little bit of anchor bias about the last couple of years and they're reticent to follow these new highs and get back in the stock market because of what's happened. But we can't do that because we've got to really got to play the game as we see it. So two years has been tough, but there will be brighter years ahead. So that's uh, the power of patience. We need to wait for those periods to come. I also go on a bit about trading rules, systems and processes, which is what I'm all about. Uh, it helps consistency. It helps success. There's lots of things in there. So some, certainly some good articles for you to read in there, all about stock radar, and that will help you very much understand what we do. Okay, so what I actually do in my trading strategy is I focus on trends. And I know everybody talks about focusing on trends, but they occur regularly. They're always in the market. They, they, they give us our profits, um, and they're very, very important. The, the biggest um, problem we have is ourselves when we're trying to identify and maximise stock, um, stock trends. And the way we do that is by systematic processes of making sure we cut our losses and maximise our gains. I'm going to keep repeating that because that's what we do. Okay, so the decision-making tool I use is price analysis. I don't look at fundamentals, I don't look at news, I look at simply look at price analysis. It is because price is what we trade, price is what we profit from, so price is what we analyse or what I analyse, because that's the most important thing. And it is a much simpler 
thing than analysing a myriad of complex fundamentals uh, which do often don't even bear any relationship to the price at the moment. So you can often see price go in different directions to fundamentals, what the fundamentals are saying, and that's because of us and human perceptions. Okay, so that's what we do and that's why we do it. Okay, how can we help you? Okay, firstly what I do is I provide a, I provide Provide my site as an, as an example. It's an education process, but I use uh, the trading centre for trading as the actual uh, the end examples of what I do of why I do it. So the processes I teach you, the systems, uh, all, all the methods are really designed to give you some guidance on how to trade the stock market. And most of these uh, processes, systems that I use can all be can, can all be uh, templated over any sort of strategy that you like. I use one strategy, which is identifying trends from trend reversals and new highs, but there are lots of different strategies that are in the stock market, and there are some tables in my newsletter that show you some of the different ones, like key lows, new highs, uh, stocks that have corrected by a certain amount that offer a certain yield. There are different ways we can, we can profit from the stock market, but we always have to have um, rules by which we abide by on entering and exiting. So that's the important part. So with me, te the technical analysis tools I use for the entry are two setups. One is the trend reversal and one is the new high. That's all I need. That's all I use. Simple as that. Okay. Um, then I overlay the trend intensity indicator and a little bit of confirmation, which is some tools like price movement, volume, moving averages, and momentum, all to give me some sort of guidance as to how the price is behaving and what's, can, what's likely to do. So it's like a confirming filter. Okay, so that's the entry part. Then the exit part is simply uh, risk management, which is my primary objective, and that is run by a trailing stop. I will not lose more than 15%. Uh, there will be slippage in some situations where I will do, but that is my rule. I set my stops at 15%, and that's what I, that's what I live by. I would much rather get out and get back in later on than try and wear a big drawdown. Okay, so that gives you the two entry and exits. Now, really what, what I do is the analysis is the entry. That's how I get in. But once I'm in a trade, the exit is purely managed by uh, the, the, the risk management process. Okay, nothing to do with analysis, managing the trade. Okay, so that's how I help you. I guide you on entries and I guide you on exit, I guide you on risk management. Okay, and the trading center, which is my main page, is the culmination of all these exercises. Okay, so now let's get to the top 10 of what we're really looking for today, is what the markets are doing. Okay, the top 10 I've got at the moment, you can see there aristocrat car sales, uh, CSR, uh, Detura Royalty is an interesting one, which we're going to look at later on. FANG, which is a, an ETF. Magellan Global Fund, which just keeps going rallying higher and higher. And you can see the chart there, excess, exceeding us on the out, upside, going further than we expect, which what is what trends do. Then we have the NDQ, which is the, uh, the NASDAQ. Prometicus, another one which just goes on and on and on. Um, uh, Qual, which is the world indices, and then RIA, it's, it's another communication stock. So that's my top 10 at the moment, and you notice I've got arrows next to car sales and, and Prometicus. That's because they're the two big trends that have extended. I'm going to have a look at those later on. It's just amazing how trends do that. They always exceed our expectations on the upside. Okay, so that's why we're not, we shouldn't get out. We should let our stock process follow the process, follow the trades higher. Okay. So my stock pick update at the moment, uh, from December I'm talking about now, now we've picked up 15 new stock picks altogether. Uh, so we're now to 47 stock picks at the moment on Stock Radar, which is not bad, more than we've had for quite a while, and it seems to be growing quite a bit. I think we had four or five in last week. So there were 39 actual stocks of 160 stocks, and eight of those, and eight are ETFs, um, of 23 that I cover. So the 47 stocks, 39 are st stocks, 88 uh, ETFs. Okay, now so that's the, the top 10 in the stock pick count. Now I want to recap the couple of setups that I have just in, in real time just so you can see what I do. So first we're going to go through the, through the overseas markets. Okay, and as I mentioned before to you, um, the Dow Jones is making new highs. Sorry, we'll just go back to the Dow Jones. And again, it's making new highs. We've had, I think I've got there, we've got 13 of the last 14 weeks have been up, and there's one little one here which has been down. So it's been a fairly meteoric rise. We've seen uh, since since October, November, um, a pretty powerful move higher. We've seen some very good volume. We've seen some very good momentum. And the, and the moving average is also pointing up. So all those things I use in trend intensity are all positive for the Dow Jones, and that really just tells you there's only one way you can play it, and that is on the upside. Now we've got confirmation from the S&P, which has now broken through to new highs. 
Um, it's also showing huge volumes, huge and great momentum. It's starting to get it well away from its average. The thing that I'll probably mention here, and I'm going to repeat this a little bit later on, is that markets always pull back. And the pullbacks are the challenges to us where we think all of a sudden we doubt and we worry and think, well, what's going to happen? Will the market never come back? But we really just have to have set, um, stop losses set to, to restrain us from getting out too early. Uh, and it's really a challenge, but all markets do pull back and we just have to steal our metal in those cases and be tough and be strong. If the stop goes off, we get out. If it doesn't go off, we run with it. And things like those stocks, like ProMedicus, car sales, they don't go one way, they go up and they go down. We have to live through those corrections and it's important that we, uh, that we hang on through them if they remain above our stop. Okay, so the S&P 500's been very strong. Also the NASDAQ, again, very, very powerful. Uh, hasn't broken its high yet, uh, but it certainly had a big rally. Again, we've seen the great volume patterns and great uh, momentum here as well. So those US indices are looking pretty good. And our market, in fact, has yesterday Popped his nose just through the highs there, and as you can see, um, it's come back a bit today, as we know, but it's certainly testing those highs there. And I've mentioned up here that above here, this is one, two, three, four, five sort of highs we've got here, which is making this a significant level. The more points I have on a line, the more significant it is when it's broken. So above here is a new high, all time high, and it will break significant resistance. Um, the last time we tested was back in February 23, and here we are back in February 24, having another go with the higher lows here, um, and it's, it's looking pretty positive there. Okay, so our market's looking pretty positive there. We haven't, we've got to close above there yet, but it looks pretty good. Okay, to commodities, gold, not so interesting in the commodity sector. Gold's come back a bit. We've knocked out, out all our stock picks from gold. It just hasn't performed well. It is correcting. It may rally from here, but it is struggling. Uh, and we're in for a support challenge at the moment on, vo and, uh, on gold. And there's really here, the volume's in the momentum's positive. Volume really hasn't told us a great deal. It's been a pretty wishy-washy break. And for such a significant break of about one, two, three years, I would have expected further. So maybe it will, but I'm not that happy about it at the moment. Okay, the next one we look at is copper, which has also been a bit wishy-washy, um, but it's been probably trading sideways for about a year since May last year, or just under a year, really not doing much. The last couple of weeks we've seen a bit of volume pushing the market higher, but it's still not really doing much, and we do have a heavy weight above it. So for copper, for me, it's just a bit of a worry um, as to how quick we're going to be able to recover uh, for the moment. So... Um, you know, momentum's flat down here, you know, not a lot of volume there. So, again, I'm not that encouraged. And certainly no trends available at this stage for, doc, for Dr. Copper. And Brent, again, not performing that well. We've got, we've got um, bombs going off everywhere around the world. Red Sea, Ukraine, Middle East, and oil is just really doing nothing. So um, I don't know what that's all about. Oil's been a, bit of a, oil's been a bit of a tricky one for me, but for the moment, all I can do is what the chart says, and it says it's come down quite a bit from 120. It's holding $70. It's not really showing any great signs of going higher, but that's just the way it is. So commodities are really a bit, uh, little bit uh, flat there at the moment. Apart from one, which is iron ore, and I look at that in the newsletter, which I put out yesterday, um, and there's a beautiful iron ore chart there, and it just goes up and up and up. Uh, I think the other commodities, uranium's the other one, and I talk about uh, Bannerman uh, and Deep Yellow and Paladin, um, how their gains are going well. So there is a couple of commodities going well, but certainly not the ones we're looking at here. Okay, so now that's, uh, that's the overseas markets. Now I want to just get into a couple of stocks for you. Firstly, Commonwealth Bank. Okay. <clears throat> An interesting stock, and I do notice that most of the brokers have got sales in this stock, and I don't know why, because all it does is go up. Now, <clears throat> this is broken out of a big one, two, three-year trading range. <clears throat> Excuse me. We've had a slight bias up the last couple of years. <clears throat> Excuse me. But it's broken to new highs and it just continues high. Now it's come back a bit today. But really, in my, in my world, I forget the metrics. I ignore price levels, 110, 115, don't care. What I do is I follow the trend. And again, this one here has probably been about 15 or 16 weeks higher without so much as a, a tiny little pullback here. So since uh, late October, this has just gone from 
uh, $96 to $117. So uh, this is a very good trend. It's moving to new highs. The trend intensity rating is 10. Volume is good. Most of the stocks at the moment have a little bit of a lull here because of the holiday period, but generally volumes have been good here. Momentum is good. It's above the average. So Commonwealth Bank for me, and I do cover the banks again in the newsletter uh, yesterday. Um, Commonwealth Bank is the standout, but there may be some stocks about to catch up in that banking sector, so have a look at the newsletter tomorrow, um, now and uh, you can see what I'm talking about there. So, the Commonwealth Bank, the trend is up, we follow with a stop until we're told to get out. So, our stops down here at the moment at 103 will rise pretty quickly from here as the market gets higher. Okay, now I talked about, about Car Group before, now called Car Group as opposed to Car Sales. Um, but it's really, again, we've just seen this stock since the trend reversal back in December 22. Uh, it broke above here, sorry, broke above here in November 22. Came back again. This is one of these pullbacks we've got to live through. All of a sudden, it comes back. A stop didn't go off here. It didn't do the 15%. So we hang on to here. And we did struggle a little bit here, but finally it did get on its bike. And we've made a new high, which confirms the trend reversal entry. And now it's a little consolidation, and up it goes again. And it's now up around $33.00 being around about um, 22 when we first started on this one here. So it's been a pretty good rally. Again, it's extending, 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 and I don't know how far it's going to go. All I know is I'm going to follow with my stop loss uh, as it goes higher. Trinity rating is 10. I've got a big volume pattern, pattern here, but if we generally just squeeze this up a little bit, we can see that generally the volume here has been pretty good all through this period since, or well, since about August last year. Um, but really, again, some good volume down here on some of these rallies we can see down here, and momentum's always been good. It's stayed above the average, all the positives we need to see for car sales. So why would you sell? Okay, so that is a trend reversal which became a new high. And if we just look at another new high at the moment that I'm looking at, and that is Cochlear, which um, uh, it was in its trading range for uh, about four years there, from 2020 to 2024. It broke out uh, late last year, and again, we had this pullback, which is again, this is our challenge, the pullbacks, the ones that pull back and we doubt and we worry, and we think, am I going to lose money again? But you just have to wear these ones and be strong. If your stop doesn't go off, you hang on to them, okay? Now, this then kicked higher from about 240 It's $300 now, above $300, and it's, and it's looking very good. So it's uh, the trend intensity rating is 10. There's no reason uh, you wouldn't hold on to this stock. Volumes are a bit difficult on this one. It's one of those stocks a bit like CSL. It's hard to get a hold of stock. So the sellers just back off, back off, back off, and the buyers have got to chase them. And the, the volumes don't go through in that case. Um, so that's why it's a bit light in the volume section here. But momentum is good, the moving average is good, and the price action is good, and it's the weight of evidence that we're really important, that's important for us, okay? So that is uh, Cochlear, which has been a great performer. Finally, we've got a breakthrough. Okay, now we go to Prometicus. It's the other one which we've sort of looked at and we've followed and we've rallied through here. We've got the trend reversal back here. Back in October, a bit like Car Group. Don't know what happened at the same time, but it did. Uh, we had a trend reversal here. We had a pullback from there. It didn't really dip too badly, but we've just had a series of high highs and high lows. It's gone through a new, new high here. High highs, high lows, pullbacks. High highs, pull, so high highs, pullbacks, and now a high high again. It's now above $100. Uh, from originally being around 50 or just above 50 when we started this trade. So it's been a really good one. Again, volume's been very good, momentum's been very good, and also the moving average is pointing higher. When it points like that high, that's a fantastic thing. So why would you sell? You don't. You just simply raise the stop. Okay, trend intensity rating is 10 for Prometicus. Um, I don't think I really need to say much more on that one. It's just a clear pattern. It's a very simple thing what I do. It's a very simple process. I don't get caught up, as I say, in news, rumours, fundamentals, or worry about things. All I do is focus on price and the price action and use my trend intensity indicator to help confirm what's happening there. Okay, so that's Prometicus. Now we're going to go to one stock that we looked at a lot last year and we've been very patient at this one, uh, but finally it seems to have broken higher, which is Deterra Royalties, which is the off spin off from, I think, from Maluka. Um, so its trend intensity rating is 10. Um, we saw this, we watched this all last year, waiting for this level to break, and finally we got a breakthrough up here. Um, it had a pullback, it had a very quick pullback actually, from 520 to, um, to about 480. A stop held, it didn't go off, 
uh, and they're since really pretty strong. It's probably come back a bit today, that's okay. But generally you can see throughout this whole pattern here the volume has been very good. A um, bit of a holiday lull there which has happened. Momentum's been good and the moving average of the pattern doesn't always occur but when it does occur that's what we like to see. All, all signals are flashing green and uh, that's important. So the trigger was the, the, the actual price action. Uh, it's above the moving average, volume's good and momentum is also good. Okay, so that's really all the stocks I've got for you today. Um, I just really wanted to re reinforce the new highs in my trend reversal process, which is what I simply use to get into my trade. And as you can see there, once I'm in my trade, I manage them with my stop loss, i.e. risk management. Okay, so um, what's happening at StockRate? I mentioned the newsletter was out yesterday. Um, I think start off with the biggest part of trading is believing in yourself that you can do it. It's like anything in, in life, you know, trading is very sim similar to life. And if you believe in yourself, you can do something, you'll probably do it. So if you can believe you can make a success out of trading, you will probably do it. Um, so that's a really important part you've got to do. Um, I review the banks in the newsletter. Um, I do a, an article in my radars around on stops. I review it be, um, for, for, for simple reasons of risk uh, and emotion. Simplicity, adaptability, consistency, and peace of mind. So my stop loss, now that I'm comfortable with the process, what I do, I don't really worry about the stock market. I don't look at it every day. I watch it, you know, quite often because I've got to write about it. But really, the only thing I do is look at it on Friday, see where the price is and where my stop is. And if it's gone below, I get out. If it's not gone below, I hang on and I might lift it if necessary. Okay, so that's... Um, so that's the stop loss process. And I do cover, I said Bannerman, uh, which is one of those stocks uh, which is volatile, was a $40 stock. It did come back to 16 cents. So you gotta be careful of these stocks, but when they rally, they rally and you can make some money and you must use stops and listen to the stops in there. So Paladin I do cover, which is in my trading center. It's doing well, Deep Yellow is doing well, and Bannerman, which is my little stock alert, which is out of my 160 group, which is certainly worth watching at the moment. So that's all I've got for today. Um, uh, welcome back, uh, well it's nice to come back. Um, looking forward to a much better year this year. I'm looking, loving all these new highs. And when I look at this here, these new highs, I'm looking at the potential of stocks uh, from Promaticus to Car, the list I've got at the moment runs through Paladin, Seven Group, Cochlear, Super Cheap Auto, um, uh, Premier Investments, Goodman Group, CSR, BSL, Fortescue, Ampol, Champion Iron, CBA, um, JB Hi-Fi, Medibank Pro finally broke up, um, Brickworks, Next DC, they're all doing it at the moment and they're all opportunities for you to go and have a look at, okay? And for those of you who subscribe to Stock Radio, you can look at them on the Trading Centre and if you don't, come on board, have a look and start following these stocks and start making some money out of these new highs because they are fantastic. Okay, well that's all I've got for today. Thanks very much for listening. It's nice to be back and I'll see you all again next week. Thanks very much.